Hi, this is Jennifer Beamer, owner-operator of Expertly Dyed Art by Science. This is episode two. <laughs> Sorry it wasn't daily because um, yesterday my throat was really, really sore uh, from teaching all day. And um, actually two days in a row it was really sore from teaching right after being sick. So it was a little felt a little raw, so I decided to give it a day's break. Anyway, so I'm back again uh, for episode two. And... Um, First, I just wanted to show you some fun stuff. Uh, the rest of our boxes arrived back here from from America. Um, <clears throat> there was this huge fiasco where our boxes got sent back to America from Korea, and two months later, they finally arrived back, and um, now we have all of our stuff. So, anyway, I would just just like to show you what I've got. So this, you can see. This is a bat of Cormo that I hand processed. So I washed the fleece, dyed the fleece, and then I carded it. And then, uh, let's see if I can get some nice detail here. This stuff, like the orange stuff here, and I don't know if you can really see this pink stuff here. Um, this is Sari Silk. And then this green stuff here, this is Tussa Silk. And then there's some really shiny, glittery stuff. I don't know if it really can capture it very well but it's this stuff right here uh, and then I think I also added yeah I did I added some um, Lester long wool locks to this particular bat and um, yeah so I'm really excited to be able to make these things again my drum card arrived and it works just fine so these these kinds of things you will be able to see in my Etsy shop once I figure out the shipping still. <laughs> it's on the docket for things to do. Anyway, and then <clears throat> I finally finished my lace weight skein of yarn. This is some wool that I bought for my new Kromsky wheel when all of my fiber and my spinning wheel were on a boat to America at some point. Yeah, so. I got really, really impatient and decided, you know what, I'm just going to buy a new wheel and some fiber. <clears throat> so that's what I did. Sorry, I'm a little bit sick still. Um, so this is how the color ended up turning out, which I think, I mean, it's not as vibrant as I wanted because it's a lace weight uh, two ply, but I think it turned out really, really well. And I can't wait. I actually have to wash this, but our sink is full of hair. <laughs> So it's not draining properly, and I don't want this to get dirty um, while I'm trying to wash it, if that makes sense. Anyway, so I will post pictures of this on my Facebook profile, um, <clears throat> my, my fan page, actually. So you can see some close-up pictures of how this looks. And the last thing, a good friend of mine, Nicole Snow from Darn Good Yarn, she sent me this beautiful package of all this stuff. And in it <clears throat> is this pulled sari silk and I can't tell you how soft this is I told my husband to touch it and he said that it reminded him of cotton candy which is totally right um, it's very soft there's tons of colors in here I'll, I'll have to take some pictures of this and post this on my fan page as well because it's, it's absolutely gorgeous and you can actually just spin this and I have before you just draft out a little piece like this and then you just you just start adding some twists and you get this really soft, lumpy, bumpy yarn. It's beautiful. Beginners, this is this is uh, maybe not your first fiber to play with, but I definitely remember when I first started spinning and I got a sample of pulled sari. I mean, it looked gorgeous. Just, you know, minimally drafted with big chunks of the fiber stuck in it just like that. Right? So this, this stuff is amazing. I'm not going to spin this. What I'm going to do with it is card it with some wool and have it be a topping, kind of like the sari silk and the um, glitter is for this bat. <coughs> so uh, lots of fun stuff coming soon. <laughs> and then the second thing I wanted to talk about today is a little bit of what inspires me as an artist. I have found over the years that the best artists have lots of inspiration and part of it comes from their hobbies. So even though I am a hardcore crafter, I'm also a hardcore gamer. Um, <laughs> a gamer in the sense that I love 
watching other people play video games. Is that weird? Yeah, I think that's a little weird. <laughs> so I found out really early on that I just don't have the coordination to play video games. And I think part of it beca was because when I was younger, I never played video games. I was more of a daydreamer fantasy girl where I played with dolls and attempted to draw. And I say I sang a lot. I made up my own songs a lot. <clears throat> anyway, so <clears throat> whenever I see someone playing a video game, I really like the stories, especially RPGs. And um, the hard part, though, is I hate dying. I get really stressed out when I keep dying over and over. Sometimes I just want to know what the story is, but I can't get past a certain part because this bad guy keeps killing me and I'm just not dexterous enough or something to actually pull that off. I have gotten better, though. Anyway, so I've been watching a lot of video games being played. My husband plays a lot of video games sometimes. I actually ask him, please, can you play FF7? <laughs> or please, can you can you play Skyrim? Because <clears throat> it's really entertaining for me to watch. And a lot of times when I'm crafting, you know, I don't need all of my brain cycles working on whatever it is I'm working on. So I like to do other things. I'm a big multitasker. <laughs> I can't just sit and watch TV or a movie or something. I have to be doing like three other things while I'm doing that. I don't know. Part of, it, part of it is probably because I often don't have a lot of time to just do one activity at a time, so I have to group activities together so that I can get more accomplished. Anyway, uh, or maybe I'm just really OCD about getting stuff done. <laughs> anyway, so I watch a lot of video games and Skyrim. I mentioned that already. I love Skyrim. If you haven't heard of it, I will post the link below and I will also post a link for the literal Skyrim tra trailer because it's like the most hilarious thing in the world. You don't even really have to know what the trailer is or what the game is about because the guy who does it is a genius. <laughs> it makes everybody laugh. Anyway, so when I first heard about Skyrim and I found this trailer, I was like, oh my gosh, this is going to be a great game. Bought the game, played it for hours and hours and hours. I even pulled all-nighters, staying up 8 o'clock in the morning, playing this game, and then going to work <laughs> without any sleep, coming home, working on my business, training martial arts, and then having to go to bed at like 11.30 midnight <laughs> after having just pulled an all-nighter. Those days were really rough. Anyway, so it really influences me because... Um, I already like to play games like D&D, &D, Dungeons and Dragons. I have two episodes currently available on my playlist. I will link. For, I will put a link there for that playlist as well. I started playing D&D uh, around 2004 during the summer, um, but I had to stop because I was going away to college and driving back and forth every weekend to play. It was a little bit hectic. Now you can do this sort of thing online, um, but at the time, that, that really wasn't heard of. I mean, the internet was still new for me because we didn't officially get it in our house until the year 2000. And I was still using, like, MSN to chat with everybody. Yeah. <laughs> I feel so ancient when I say things like this. Anyway, so I play a lot of role-playing games. I like to watch a lot of games in general. Um, anything that has a good story, I really like to watch other people play. Um, anyway, and I think that it really influences my crafts because sometimes I get really inspired by the things that I watch. Like, for example, Brandon introduced me to StarCraft back in 2006, I think. And um, I hated it because he kept beating me. <laughs> I would get really upset. And I'm like, Brandon, I'm never going to play this again with you. <laughs> He's so mean. Anyway, so... I really got interested in at least watching it, and then we started watching a caster, Day 9, uh, Sean Plott. He lives in California, and he was a former professional player, and now he casts and trains other people um, through his dailies, and I really like watching him. He's like the biggest nerd in the world, and so many people love him. Like he, He's great. <laughs> he really is. Anyway, so I um, started watching a lot of his stuff, and because of Brandon's interest in StarCraft, I steadily became more and more interested. And then I started dragging him to 
uh, major league gaming events <laughs> because <clears throat> I wanted to see day nine. <laughs> I'm like, Brandon, we need to go. <laughs> and he's like, okay, <laughs> we'll go. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, I would go to these things. And um, because I'm also a crafter, I was kind of melding these two things together. So when I met day nine for the first time, I knitted his little bunny Manfred, a sweater that was too small for him. You can see uh, over my left shoulder here, there's uh, two little stuffed animals on the bed. One of them is a bunny. The other one is a golden retriever dog. I tried, I fit the sweater to the dog because I thought that's about the same size Manfred was. But apparently Manfred is more of a beast than our little dog here, so it didn't fit. It fit his head. <laughs> and that was such an awesome, sh that's an awesome shot of, he, he put the sweater, Day 9 put the sweater on Manfred's head. That's how small it was. <laughs> so it totally didn't fit. But, you know, I was the first fan to actually craft something for Day 9's bunny. And then since... I guess someone else decided that, you know, make a bigger sweater that actually fit him. <laughs> anyway, so I like to kind of combine my interests together. And um, I also had had like a lot of ideas about making Terran or Zerg or Protoss colorways on fiber. And those are basically the different three different races that you can play in StarCraft. And I've also wanted to make Day 9 a scarf, which I still don't have the time to do yet. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying. Because <laughs> I, I think he needs a scarf for when he travels to colder places like Germany for casting. Um, anyway, so yeah, I just thought I'd let you guys know that I am actually a really big dork. I like to watch games. I like to play games, even though I'm really terrible at it. I play Skyrim on super easy because I hate getting bogged down with fights that are too long or that I keep dying. <laughs> so I play it on easy because I like the story. And um, at this point, my character is so overpowered that I can destroy pretty much anything. Dragons are no big deal for me. <laughs> Anyway, so if you like this video and like listening to me chat, uh, please subscribe. There's going to be a whole slew of links below for Facebook, Twitter. Um, hoping to get my Etsy site up sh very soon, like I was just mentioning. Um, so you know, subscribe, like this video, and hopefully we'll be able to do these every day now. All right, bye.